Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev. In this video I'm doing another SQL tutorial all about Unpivot. Let's head over to SQL Server Management Studio now and we'll work through some examples. Okay, so here I have a simple script. It's just going to check if a table called survey responses exists if it does it's going to drop that table uh, we're then going to create that table just to give you a, a bit of background of what I'm doing within this example one of the the common and pivot operations I have to work with in my in my day-to-day -day job is survey responses um, so I've worked with third parties in the past who've typically handed handled those surveys for us uh, and then have sent a flat file of those responses um, but how that response how those responses have been received is each column is a question and then within the the value within the rows area that stores the the response um, so this is a typical unpivot operation I'm going to have to do uh, in this scenario, I'm impersonating, I work for a hotel chain, uh, and I'm just collecting data from the survey responses. So I'm imagining we've got these values stored in our database, whether we've imported that data or not. Of course, we can perform an unpivot operation uh, in integration services, but we're going to be doing it within the database. So I'm going to create this table survey responses. It's going to store a survey ID, which is going to be a unique identifier for each survey. And then we're just going to have four simple questions, and they're all the same data type of a tiny integer value. Typically, they represent uh, 0 to 5, apart from the last question, which is, will you stay here again, which is actually a, a, a Boolean value, a true or false value, but I'm storing it as the same data type for my unpivot operation. Uh, why I'm doing that, stay tuned to the channel as I will be uploading a video shortly on why that is required uh, for an unpivot operation. Uh, and then I'm just going to simply insert some values. If you do want to follow along with this tutorial, this script will be available in the description below um, towards the bottom. So if you scroll down the description, you'll be able to copy and paste this script into your own database and follow along. I'm just going to go ahead and execute this now, uh, which is just going to simply create us a table with five rows. And I will just show that and we'll talk about the unpivot operation. So when we're unpivoting data, um, so we can see the the results set on screen now what we actually want to achieve here is for each survey ID we then want to have another column called question that is going to list each of the four questions we then want to have another column called answers which is going to store the response that we've received so what we're going to do is for each column header uh, and in this case it's how clean was your room, how satisfied are you with the facilities, how was breakfast and will you stay here again. They're going to become a new column and it's going to repeat those values for each survey ID. Now the responses are also going to go into another column and they're going to be our, our answer column. So when we're performing an unpivot operation typically what we want to do is create two new columns one with the names that already exist and then another one with the values that go against those names so i'm just going to hide the results and we'll we'll talk a bit about the syntax so the syntax for unpivot is is quite similar to the pivot operation actually and if you if you're not familiar with pivot there are lots of great videos on my channel so feel free to check those out as well so from a table, in this case it's going to be survey responses, what we want to return is our, our column list, our new names column, which is going to be referring to the existing column values, and then a values column, which is going to be our answer column. And if we look at the unpivot operation in more detail, so it's similar to pivot, we unpivot um, 
and that operation has uh, an alias. I'll just put a semicolon on the end of that. So we're going to what we're looking to do is unpivot uh, our values column, which in this case is going to be answer, for our names column, which in this scenario is question, and then we're going to say the unpivoted columns we want. So that's going to be a list of our current column names. So let's go ahead and write this out. Um, yes, so we'll start with this simple select statement. So at the moment we're selecting all of the all of the table columns. So we're going to simply underneath that we're going to write the keyword unpivot and then we're going to open parentheses and then what we're going to define here is our values column and that's where these these values of 0 to 5 are going to be stored now we want that to be called answer so these values of 0 to 5 are going to go into a new column called answer and that's going to be for our names column and what we're going to call our names column is question. So we can see how, there how we're defining our two new columns. Our first column is going to be the values, which is going to be called answer, and our second new column is going to be question, which is going to store the existing column names. And then we're going to specify what those column names are. So we're going to say in, and I'm just going to go onto a new line and copy and paste these just for simplicity and I'll just align those nicely and we'll close off those so what we're saying here is our new question column is going to store these values and then we're going to close off our pivot operation and remember to give this uh, an alias, so I usually alias it as U or P depending on the operation I'm performing. Now once we've done that, the select no longer has any knowledge of these column names because what we're going to do here, change within the select, is put our new column names. So we're going to write out question and answer. And I'll just hide the results grid so we can see that more clearly. So we're going to select from survey responses and then we're going to be performing the unpivot operation against that table. The select is actually what we're selecting from the final result. So you might be thinking, well you're selecting these columns from that table but these columns don't yet exist. But remember unpivot is part of from which is our first operator in logical query processing so it's actually this operation that's being performed first that's the first step it's going to be going to survey responses unpivoting according to our instructions and then we can only select from that unpivot operation hopefully that's that's clear and if we look at the what we've written compared to the syntax so again going back to these these two new column names our names column is going to be question and again that's going to be storing what our original column names were and our values column is answer so it's going to be taking values at the intersection so it's going to be looking at survey id and then how clean was your room and taking that value and transposing the data so taking it from a column value and turning it into a row value I'm going to go ahead and execute this query now to show you the results and what that looks like so we can see our survey ID initially we just had one row but now we've got four questions we've unpivoted four columns that's now duplicated four times and then we've got each of our questions how clean was your room against that survey ID and the answer values that were stored within that query as well. Again, if you do want to follow along, these queries will be in the description uh, as well as this final output.
Now, there's a few things to note uh, that can drive you a bit insane with this syntax is one of the things is forgetting to put an alias as we're actually returning effectively a derived table to our select if we don't put an alias and we try to execute it it will just give us an incorrect syntax message that's not really clear of what the issue is, is here so we need to remember when performing pivot or unpivot operations we have to give it an alias and that will return us the correct results notice also as well that all of the just go back to this that all of the columns other than survey ID which is kind of separate we're not performing any operation on that all that's really happening with survey ID is it is being duplicated by the number of columns that we are then transferring to rows so if we have uh, 10 columns we will then be repeating that survey ID 10 times but the important thing to notice is how I've used the same data type so typically will you stay here again as it's a boolean value would typically be stored as that uh, but in this case I needed to make sure that they were the same data type to perform this unpivot operation I'm not going to go into that too much here as I do want to get another video up on the channel shortly explaining about working with different data types in unpivot operations so again just to go through the final syntax we've got our columns list we've got our names column and we've got our values column I really hope you have enjoyed that video if you have feel free to hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded feel free to post anything in the comments below if you'd like to see different videos or if there's anything you're struggling with let me know in the comments and I'll get a video up as soon as possible thanks a lot for watching